Hey guys, Trev here from SpineWise. I'm continuing on from our cycling series today. Uh, what I want to talk about today is knee pain in cyclists, a really common problem. Uh, cyclists of all levels, really common though, especially in um, road bike users. Um, like always, if you love our videos, please like, share um, our videos, subscribe to our channel, turn on notifications, it's the easiest way you can keep up to date with all our videos uh, and make sure you're getting the most out of your health and your life. All right, so how are we gonna talk about um, knees? So there's two big common issues that we see with cyclists when it comes to knees. The most common one is pain at the front of the knee. Um, and then we have a few cycles we also develop down the side of the knee. Pretty rare is the back of the knee. So I really wanna talk on the, the front and the side and how these two actually interact with each other. So one of the things that does happen is when the knee bends and straightens, what you see is your kneecap actually slides through this nice smooth groove on the femur there. Uh, and that allows for this nice pivot point. And one of the key things that we see with uh, people who have this anterior knee pain is problems in that mechanism. Generally comes from one or two reasons. Uh, either one, you've strained the quadricep, or two, there's dysfunction neurologically that's affecting the way the quadricep fires. If we're looking at the strain pattern, the most common reason we see knees get strained in or quadriceps get strained in athletes, especially in cyclists, is really to do with their saddle height. So if the saddle height is too high, one of the problems that we have with that is that as the knee, if I can bend this a little bit, you can see how the patella hits the femur and sits in the nice groove of the patella. When we straighten the leg, that actually comes out and the patella or the kneecap disengages with the femur. And this occurs really when the knee is straighter than about 15 degrees. So if the saddle is too high and your knee is getting straighter than 15 degrees, uh, the kneecap is gonna get loose, it's gonna get mobile. And then if you rapidly contract on the um, upstroke again, uh, the result is gonna be, you're gonna be jamming that uh, patella or the kneecap into the femur and irritating the knee. Um, doesn't sound like too big a deal, but when you start doing it thousands and thousands and thousands of times over a couple of hours, um, the result is inflammation, irritation, and problems. So that's the first one that we look at. The second one we look at are those who have their saddle height too low. So if you have it too low, once the knee gets beyond about 30 degrees, we have such a massive fulcrum point over the knee. Uh, the result of that is that we end up jamming the kneecap into the femur, and that again starts creating inflammation within the bursas um, and the tendons are around the knee itself. Another really, really big problem. Uh, the other way that we see these things develop as well is if the quadricep is not firing correctly, which is a neurological firing problem. Uh, really common with people who have um, um, brain problems on that one side. I'm not talking about brain damage and stuff like that or, or concussion or things. I'm talking about just functional shifts, neural excitation, fatigue issues, stress issues, overtraining problems, immune problems, these type of things. Um, and when that quadricep just doesn't fire very effectively, it's really a timing problem more than anything else. Uh, so it doesn't engage at the right time and the result is that we start getting inappropriate forces being put through the knee at inappropriate times. The result again, kneecap getting jammed into the knee, uh, excessive tension being put on the patella tendon, inflammation at the insertion, inflammation at the bursa, uh, irritation under the kneecap, inflammation there, and this really does set off a chain of events. The other aspect that we keep going up, these tendons actually cross, or part of those tendons actually cross over the hip and are responsible for bringing the leg up in the first place. So as the hip comes up in the upstroke, uh, this is really important as well. So if we're having this decreasing function, what we know is inhibition through this area at that time, it will also affect that. And the way the body gets around that is by using a key muscle that sits on the side called your TFL. Uh, as it uses the TFL, we get tightening of the ITB. And then especially if our knee bend is too great or not great enough and we're too straight, the ITB will start rubbing across the femoral knuckle on the side there. As it rubs across that knuckle on the side, we get irritation, we get inflammation, and some will feel that as a burning sensation. Some will feel like they're tearing a ligament in that area or a meniscus in that area, uh, but the result is always the same. It's just a friction that drives that. So really what we wanna look for with these type of injuries, number one, do we have a saddle height position? That's the first thing you need to look for. 15 to 30 degrees, we wanna make sure the knee bends somewhere in that order. And then the second thing, of course, is dysfunction in the quad itself. Um, and there are strength tests you can do for that, but really it's a functional assessment that we need and we really need to be properly assessed by somebody who understands uh, neurofunctional muscle um, development.
<clears throat> but anyway, guys, if you have any questions with that and you're having any problems in any way, shape or form, they can be complicated, but they can be very, very, very easy to fix. Sometimes they don't even need to be assessed. Um, just a quick conversation can very, very quickly tell you what your problem is and um, what you can do about it. So if you're having issues with it, uh, just post up knee below. I'm happy to have my team help you out. Uh, otherwise, um, you can message me personally via our page, via our YouTube channel, uh, via Instagram. Um, always happy to help you out no matter where you are in the world and hopefully get a solution to your knee pain so you can get back and enjoy riding the best you possibly can. Anyway guys, that's it for me for now. Um, please watch that, the rest of our video series uh, to do with cycling and knee pain. Uh, a lot of good information there for you guys. Um, in a whole range of stuff from fatigue to injury to bike setup and to getting your kids out as well. Always great talking with you guys and uh, we'll catch up in the next vid. Bye for now.